Hi, Mark Heath here, and in this video, we're going to have a look at a few more Morelink extension methods. And these ones uh, might get a little bit tricky, so I've started off with some very simple examples, and then we'll move on to a little bit more of a realistic example. So let's start with the easiest one, first of all. Union is just, you take two sets and you union them together. So here is a sequence of four characters, A, B, C, D, and a sequence of a few more, D, E, A, D, E, F, A, G. And what union does is basically says, give, a, give me everything that is in both. Um, so if we run this, it, we no surprise that we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And because A is in both and because um, D is also in both, they don't appear twice in the output. So only the unique ones appear in the output. So that's a, a handy method. Um, but now let's look at some of these joins. So I've got this sequence A, B, C, F, G, and this lowercase sequence A, B, C, D, E. And first of all, I'm doing a right join. And what a right join does is it looks for a relationship between things on the left and the right. And anything that's related, it will include, but in, it will also include anything that's on the right but doesn't have a corresponding relationship on the left. So here I've said that the way to kind of decide whether two things are related is if the uppercase version of this item is the same as the one on the left, then they're related. So this is like a key selector. And then I provide two methods. The first one is if we only had something from the right, what should I return? And I'll just say, well, I'll just return the thing from the right. And if I got if something matched on the left and something on the right, what should I return? And I'll just put the two together. So let's run this and you'll, you'll see how it works. So I see AA, BB, CC, because they all matched, but F didn't match and G didn't match and they're not in here because it's a right join. However, on the right, there was D and E and they don't have a match on the left. So they're just on their own. So if we do exactly the same thing, but with a left join, then we see a, A, B, B, C, C, but then we see F, which is from the left and doesn't have a corresponding item on the right, and G, which doesn't. Um, and D and E aren't in there because it's a left join and we don't care about them if they don't match. And of course, then there's full join. Full join is almost the same, but I've got, now got an extra um, lambda that I need to provide what to do if I find something only on the left, but doesn't have a matching one on the right and what to do if I find something only on the right but doesn't have a match on the left. So if I run this we see A, A, B, B, C, C. Those are the ones that did match. Then I've got F and G, the ones on the left that didn't have a match on the right and I've also got D and E, the ones on the right that didn't have a match on the left. And then finally there's full group join. And you'll, the best way to show you how this works is to just run it. So I'll run it on that same data. And you'll see here, we've got a sequence where we've got every key. And remember the key is selected by two upper. So every key, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then it shows us what's on the left with what's on the right. So A matches A, B to B, C to C. F and G are on their own, and these two are on their own. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. Let's go on to a slightly more real example of this. Um, and here I've got an author class. An author has an ID and a name, and a book class. And a book has an author ID and a book name. Okay, so I've got a few authors, um, Elton Stoneman and Andrew Locke highly recommend their books and me who hasn't actually written any books. So I'm, I'm going to be the, the non matching item in the authors list. And then I've got some books and the books, some of them map back to the authors, but they're also something in here. So this book by Enrico Buonanano, I'm sorry, I've probably got that name completely wrong. Doesn't have a matching, um, author ID in the authors list. So there are some authors, who don't have books, there are some books who don't have authors, and there's also um, an author that has more than one book. So let's start off with right join. 
books is going to be the left collection authors is going to be the right so the output will have all authors but not necessarily all books so let's run this um, well, we'll run the whole thing and we'll look at the output of right join so right join has got all of the authors so elton stoneman um, is in there andrew Locke is in there and mark heath me i'm in there even though i have no books um, but this book doesn't make an appearance and so as you can see i've got the I've got two funks that kind of select what is going to um, help us to match together things on the left and the right. So the book's author ID has to match the author's ID. Um, but then if I only get an author, then I'm going to say author.name has no books. And if I get a match, I'm going to say the book's name by the author name. And so when we look at the left join, it's kind of the same thing apart from this time I've got to provide a function that says if we have a book name but no author was matched because now we're including things on the left we're including books that don't match authors and so here the left join it's slightly different we've got all of the books but not all of the authors Mark Heath is not in this list and we've got the book that we don't know the author of uh, functional programming in C sharp apart from we do know the author who the author actually is. Um, what about full join? Well, full join, again, this copes with both ways. It copes with books where we don't know the author and authors who don't have any books. So in full join, we've got the book by the unknown author and we've got the author with no books. And then finally, full group join. A full group join um, is really nice in this scenario, as you can see. It gives me um, the key here is actually going to be the author ID. And the first group is author ID one, who is Elton Stoneman, and he's here with the books. Second group, author ID two, Andrew Locke. Third group is the author ID nine, which we can't actually match because we don't have that author in the authors list. But then we've also got the author ID with no books. So as you can see, this is a really nice way of grouping things together. Finally, I also thought I'd show you um, us using union here. So I've got another books collection that has got one uh, duplicate book. So we already had ASP.NET Core in action in our original list of books up here. But we've got a new one that isn't in the list. And so if I want to union books one or the first list of books with the second list of books, I'm going to need a book comparer, a custom book comparer, because books by themselves um, don't have any equality overrides. And so every book will be considered different uh, to each other. And so here is just a custom equality comparer that's checking for the same name and author ID. And so when I run this, you'll see that we get a union of those list of books. But we don't have a double of ASP.NET Core in action, even though it was in both lists. OK, so that was a little bit more complicated one, but these are very useful methods if you've got two related um, lists of items and you need to join them in complicated ways.